Hi everybody, Danny Schaefer here, welcoming you to another episode of the Crucible Cast. Uh, as you can see, this is a bit of an unusual episode. We are currently uh, working from home here at Fantasy Flight, but we still did want to get you a new episode of the cast to keep you up to date on everything that's happening in the world of Keyforge. Uh, I'm going to be joined in a little bit by Tyler Parrott and Aaron Halton, who are two members of the Keyforge team who you've maybe seen before, but have not seen on the Crucible cast. Uh, so on today's episode, we're going to start by having Aaron and Tyler introduce themselves, tell you a bit about who they are, uh, what they're bringing to the team. Then we're going to share a little bit of news about mass mutation and about organized play. And finally, we're going to wrap up with a couple of rules questions. Uh, but with that said, without further ado, let's turn it over to Tyler to tell you a little bit about himself. Hello, my name is Tyler Parrott. If you recognize me, that's probably because you've seen me in the context of Legend of the Five Rings, the card game, which is the game that I am the lead developer of. Uh, however, as I'm also working on Keyforge, I wanted to introduce myself to the community so that when you see me in streams and at events, uh, I'm not a, an unfriendly face. Um, a real quick history uh, with my gaming career. Uh, I have grown up playing games my whole life. Uh, I first really cut my teeth with the hobby uh, when I started playing Magic the Gathering in the summer of 2002. Uh, that's a game that I've continued to play because I quite like it. Um, but that led me to the LCG line, which I jumped on pretty early on. Uh, when Lord of the Rings, the, L the living card game came out in 2011, I started playing that as I was also getting into Call of Cthulhu at the same time. Um, and so I played those for a bit. Those led to 40k Conquest and Arkham Horror, uh, which ultimately led to probably the game that I'm most well known for in the LCG space, which is Star Wars LCG. Uh, I played that competitively throughout its basically its entire lifespan. Uh, I ran a, a content website. Uh, I wrote articles, produced content, uh, custom content, and even some custom cards. Um, and I competed in, in events. Uh, I got second place in one of the world championships at one point. Um, I also play board games and miniatures games occasionally, although the, my real passion is for card games and role-playing games. Uh, I'm a bit of a writer on the side, and uh, so role-playing games fits into that pretty, pretty cleanly. I was hired on to FFG a couple years ago to be the lead developer of Legend of the Five Rings and also to contribute a bit of development support to Star Wars Destiny alongside Aaron, actually. And uh, so we worked on Destiny together, and now we're working on Keyforge. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about that I've done uh, since I've been at FFG so far has been a new format for Legend of the Five Rings. Legend of the Five Rings Skirmish Mode is a, a shorter game and uh, a little bit more approachable uh, than the, the, the full game. And so if you're interested, uh, I think it's a game that a, a lot of people are going to really enjoy. Outside of gaming, uh, I have studied and uh, performed music for many, many years. Uh, I have a particular focus on really early music, medieval renaissance, folk music, that kind of thing. Um, but also I've done some theater uh, through school. And as I said, I've done writing and storytelling. Um, so a lot specifically innovative things. Uh, I played alternate reality games a lot through high school and uh, and that really introduced me to the idea of interactive stories that take place uh, that blur the line between what is in the fiction and out of the fiction, right? Um, I also dance as a hobby, uh, swing dance primarily, um, although <laughs> although obviously the, uh, the work from home situation has not been very uh, supportive of that hobby. Anyway, I'm looking forward to chatting with everyone going forward uh, in the Keyforge community and uh, taking it back, Danny. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, next, let's send it over to Aaron. Aaron, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Hi, I'm Aaron Halton, and I'm excited to join the cast. I'm reporting to you from my mini painting studio slash temporary office slash quarantine bunker. Um, bit about my history before FFG. I was always super into games. I was uh, raised by a geek. I'm kind of a second generation geek and 
my dad would always take me to comic book stores. And that's when I first saw Magic the Gathering on a shelf back in 94 or 95. This was like the revised era, OG Magic the Gathering. So that was kind of my gateway drug uh, that got me into all sorts of other card games as well as role playing games and board games and minis games and video games. I was hooked ever since then. And even from an early age, I always had the inclination to create my own content and homebrew my own uh, stuff. So I was an amateur indie uh, game designer for years and years before I ever got paid for it. Uh, then I went professional about five years ago when I released my own role playing game. And uh, then about three years ago, I finally uh, got the job at FFG when I moved to this area and I sort of uh, saw that this was the land of FFG and I was already super in love with uh, several of their games, a lot of their Star Wars games and their LCGs. I love that model. And so I, I knew that I had to be there. I applied about nine times until I uh, wore them down and now here I am. Um, so when I started at FFG, I started on Star Wars Destiny mostly uh, working with Jeremy Zwern and uh, also uh, got to work with Tyler Parrott a little there too. Uh, so it be super fun to work with him again on Keyforge. We've already got a, a good working relationship there. Um, we had a, a ton of fun making that game and I lo love the mechanics of it. I still uh, love that game and like to play it with my friends and I'm super excited um, for the rest of the content that we developed to come out as prizes later. Uh, when Destiny was dwindling down, I uh, transitioned over to work on Keyforge with Brad and Danny. Uh, that's been an amazing experience uh, from the jump. Uh, so I started on Worlds Collide, the very uh, tail end of Worlds Collide, and uh, I've been focused on Keyforge ever since. I love the unique deck game concept, and I love the sense of a uh, discovery you get from cracking new packs. And I uh, also love just the whimsical, wild sort of nature of the setting. And I can't wait to keep making whimsical, wild, wacky things uh, for you to enjoy. Uh, in my spare time, I paint minis a lot and I play a lot of music. I'm a, a drummer in three different bands, all sorts of different styles, uh, um, you know, kind of a bluesy rock thing, a punk thing, and a folksy, jazzy kind of thing. Um, and I can't wait to uh, be able to go play music again with my friends when this uh, quarantine business is over. And of course, play plenty of tabletop games with all my friends out there in person. Um, so again, super excited to join the cast. That's uh, a little bit about me. And let's uh, send it back to, Dan to Danny. Thank you, Aaron. And I just want to say personally, I'm so, so excited to be working with Tyler and Aaron uh, on Keyforge. They're both super talented, super hardworking developers, and also just all around awesome people. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see all the cool stuff that we come up with. Uh, with that said, as you uh, are certainly aware, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in the world right now, and uh, it is going to mean some uh, some news for Keyforge. So I'm going to send it back over to Tyler to share some news about mass mutation and about what's happening with organized play. Take it away, Tyler. A quick recap of uh, recent of upcoming events. Unfortunately, all of organized play has been postponed until after uh, June 1st due to the global pandemic situation. And uh, that does include Keyforge Worlds. So we'll keep you informed as to how that develops. Additionally, mass mutation is also delayed. And as we uh, have more information, we will let you know. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, next, we're going to dive into rules questions. Uh, if you saw the last episode of the cast, you know that we went pretty deep on rules questions, uh, answered a ton of things that had been uh, floating out there for a while. So this episode is going to be a bit lighter. We just have uh, just two questions uh, for you guys. And Aaron is going to tackle those. So Aaron, whenever you're ready, uh, come in with those rules questions. So the first question we have is about the card key forgery. The card key forgery reads, when your opponent would forge a key, that player names a house, reveal a random card from your hand. If that card is not of the named house, destroy key forgery, and they do not forge that key. No ember is spent. So the question about this card is, can the active player name a house which is not on the Archon card of the owner of Key Forgery? 
And uh, the answer is yes. It doesn't specify that your opponent must choose a house on your Archon card, so you can absolutely name a house that's not on your, your opponent's Archon card if you wish. Uh, for instance, you might not want to do that if uh, key cost is increased at this moment. So this card's already quite strong. Uh, we didn't feel like it needed to be any more punishing than it already was, so uh, we left that option open for you. So the second question uh, is about actions. Uh, so question, is the entire text of an action applied simultaneously, or is it broken into different steps? Uh, so the case in point is the card Tendrils in Pain, which reads, play, deal one damage to each creature, deal an additional three damage to each creature if your opponent forged a key on their previous turn. So the question is, uh, if my opponent forged a key on their last turn, and I'm going to deal four damage total, basically, um, and they have a creature with ward on it, does the ward prevent all four damage that the creature would take, or just the first one damage, and then the ward pops? Uh, and the answer is... Uh, the ward only prevents the first one damage, so the creature still takes the three damage. Uh, you resolve the sentences of a card's text one at a time. Um, so first you deal one damage to each creature, that will remove the wards, and then you deal three damage to each creature. Uh, another example of a card that has the same sort of timing question a lot come up is a Smite, uh, which is commonly misunderstood. It reads, play, ready, and fight with a friendly creature, deal two damage to the attacked creature's neighbors. Again, the fight happens uh, with the first sentence, and uh, then the two damage happens later. Uh, so for example, if uh, you have Duma the Martyr and a couple of wounded creatures next to her, um, and you smite Duma the Martyr, uh, Duma will be destroyed, heal the neighbors before the two damage is applied. Um, so that can sometimes save the neighbors that way. Uh, so that's it for questions. Uh, Again, uh, glad to be part of the cast. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to ship it back to Danny. All right. Thank you, Aaron. I'm sure that will uh, clear up some confusion. Well, I think that's everything for today's episode. Uh, just a reminder to keep sending in those rules questions. They are uh, going to be answered if you send them into the email address that is hopefully appearing on your screen right now as I'm speaking. Also a reminder to follow us, like us, subscribe to us, do whatever you do on all the various social media platforms. Links for that are in the video description below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye everyone.